friends, this is Kara from iStampin.com. Thanks for joining me for my weekly iStampin Live. It's a little bit later in the day. Um, had some unforeseen computer issues uh, first thing this morning, so I was able to, you know, hours later, I was able to get that um, squared away. So I appreciate y'all being flexible and letting me come on a couple of hours later. So today I am making, I think, my very first Christmas card of the season. And I am using the brand new Color Your Season bundle. Um, I highlighted this on Sunday with my Facebook Live when I was showing y'all all the new products that I got on the Alaskan Cruise. So this is uh, while supplies last and you can actually start ordering this today. And what the bundle is, is well, I'll show you here. It's these two beautiful stamps. It's uh, two stamp sets. I got them in clear mount. And uh, so it's it's actually really nice. It definitely is blended seasons. This is just not um, for the holidays. It has uh, some really nice um, springtime florals and really nice cinnamons that you can use for uh, a lot of great things. And... Um, Gosh, I just realized I forgot to do the winner. <laughs> I was thinking of that when I was uh, getting everything situated. It's like, I need to draw the winner. So uh, I will pick the winner and I will announce it um, after I'm done. So if you do see this video and to be entered into the drawing for next week, just hit the share button and comment below that you shared. And I will uh, put your name into the drawing to win a free goodie. Okay, so going back to this. So this is the stamp set, and then also here is the um, framelits. So it is a bundle. You do save 10%, and this is the Stitched Season Framelits. And guys, I love this, this set just because of these three framelits right here. These are nesting framelits, and I don't know if you'll be able to see, but they are double-stitched and are perfect for, you know, obviously um, I made a label here, but this large one, if y'all remember our top note die from back in the day, um, I used to use it as um, a topper. So I would cut it out and then I would just fold this in half and staple it on top of a cello bag. That's a really great way to, um, a really economical and fast way to make little gifts for people. So like I said, these three framelits were the biggest reason why I got this, um, that bundle. And then I'm also, uh, also going to be highlighting our watercolor pencils, the assortment two watercolor pencils. Hi, Holly. Thanks for joining me. Oh, from South Dakota. I've got a couple of customers in South Dakota. I'm not sure how I got them, but uh, it's nice to have you. I'm glad you're joining today. All right, so again, this is the card that we're gonna be making. Let me show you all the supplies that you will need, and then we'll get started. So um, the first thing that you'll need is obviously the um, Color Your Seasons bundle. Um, I am using three colors from our brand new watercolor assortments. I'm, you know, I, I wanted to keep this fairly uh, simple. I didn't want to do a whole lot of shading just because it is, uh, it wasn't hard to color in, but it, you know, there is a little bit. So I, I tried to make it as simple as possible. So the colors I'm using are Cherry Cobbler, Garden Green, and Daffodil Delight. So you'll need that. Um see here. For the ribbon, I'm using Granny Apple Green. This is the uh, one uh, half inch textured weave ribbon. You will also need Garden Green cardstock and Granny Apple Green cardstock. I've already uh, cut these out on the die cut on my Big Shot. This is one of the die cuts that comes in the bundle. And then you will need a Cherry Cobbler cardstock along with creme cake cardstock. And the creme cake measures eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored that at four and a quarter. With the cherry cobbler, um, I uh, did some heat embossing here. You can see here that I embossed this in white, so you'll want to get your um, white stamp and emboss powder along with your heat tool and your embossing buddy right here. And then the inks, 
I'm using Memento Tuxedo Ink and Versamark. Versamark is what we'll use for um, the uh, embossing. And then uh, I'm gonna be using watercolor paper to do the uh, coloring. So you'll also need your aqua painter. And then finally, um, to be able to get this, this image, um, placed perfectly, I am going to be using the Stamparatus. So um, I'm going to be using this tool. I love this tool. The more I use it, the more I love it. And I would love to know how many of y'all have, have gotten this? And if you have, have you had a chance to play with it and do you like it? I would love to know y'all's opinions of it. Um, I don't hear too much about it. So from my customers. Hey, Becca. All right, so let's get started. We'll go ahead and start with the card. And um, this pattern paper, this is one of the new pattern papers that's going to be in our holiday catalog. If y'all can believe it, I did not get um, under the mistletoe uh, pattern paper yet, the designer series paper, so that's on its way. So I had to use some of our new holiday paper, so uh, I think y'all will enjoy that. All right, so I'm just folding on the score line and burnishing it. And then, um, so here is the, um, this is called All is Bright. And this is the really pretty bokeh pattern. If y'all saw my video on Friday, on Sunday, I showed y'all everything that comes, that I got. And oh, this paper is so pretty. Okay, and I'm just gonna attach this with snail. So is everybody having a good a good week? I can't believe it's already Wednesday. Oh my gosh, it just flies by. My kids are starting school next week. My son starts on Monday and Jillian starts on next Friday. And it's just like, this is, summer's over. We're gonna be school clothes and school supply shopping this week. This weekend, it's tax-free week in um, Florida. It's just crazy how quickly it goes. All right. So I just adhered this on um, the card base with Snail. And so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, work on the focal element. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my Stamparatus. And I always tell everybody, you know, if they're watching me for the very first time, I'm left-handed, so I do use this upside down. So if you're wondering why, um, it's the L is going this way uh, on, to the left. That's the reason why. Okay, so I am putting my watercolor paper um, right here. And what I did to make sure that this is, um, I'm positioning the stamp correctly, because it's just one stamp. So it's this, it's this stamp right here but we'll put it, um, we're gonna stamp it at the bottom and then we're gonna rotate it and stamp it at the top. So what I did is I took the framelit, I knew that was gonna happen, let me put that up here. I took the framelit and I'm placing it here on the watercolor paper and then I'll place the stamp. And um, this really helped me make sure that um, I was placing it where I wanted to be. If you kind of just like freehand it and eyeball it, I mean, if you're good with that, that that's you're better than me. So um, I by placing the framelit right here, that helped. That really helped me. Hi, Karen. Okay, so I'm gonna just pick it up. I'll go ahead and take the framelit away, and let me get one of my stamp pad or stamp sets. I like to put a stamp set underneath the um, the lid. It just helps inking up a stamp a lot better. If y'all haven't seen that, you can try that with your Stamparatus. Okay, so I've inked that up in Memento ink. And I'm just gonna press down. And with the watercolor paper, there is a texture. Um, so don't be alarmed if your, you know, if your image isn't um, perfect that you're, that you're used to when you um, stamp on smooth cardstock. So that is, um, 
that's not unusual. And I wanted to show y'all, um, when I was testing out the card today, when I was making the sample, I first used this on the shimmery white cardstock because I have used watercolor pencils on it before, but I just didn't like the look to it. And I even tried some of our new um, Stampin' Blends and Call Me Clover, and I just, I didn't like that either. So um, doing it with the watercolor paper gave me the look that I was looking for. So, um, you know, it's always nice to have this on hand. So, uh, you know, if you don't have any watercolor paper, I highly recommend it. It's wonderful quality. I think it's nicer than some of the paper that you can get at your big craft stores. So um, if you haven't tried it before, definitely give it a shot. Okay, so you saw here that I just rotated the stamp. And again, I just got the framelit and that helped me with the positioning. So again, I'm just going to ink this up in the same color ink, the black ink. down and we've got a nice good image let me just clean this off really quick all right so uh, normally what I would do let me take this out normally what I would do next is go ahead and take this over to um, take this over to my Big Shot using the um, middle framelit that we used for positioning and go ahead and cut it out. But for time, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of the coloring. And then I have already colored one um, completely just so I'm not uh, sitting here for the next however many minutes coloring uh, all of this image and y'all are just kind of like getting bored. All right, so if you have never used our watercolor pencils before, they are such a fun tool for coloring. Um, you wanna get an aqua painter. You'll need a water brush to be able to blend and move your color around. So the way the aqua painter works is you just unscrew the top and it's an empty barrel. And from here, you'll just um, fill it up with tap water and then you just screw the lid on and with our aqua painters, we have two different size brushes. So I'm using the, the finer tip one. And so what you'll do is you'll want to have um, a paper towel. Hey, Michelle, how are you today? <laughs> um, you'll have, you'll want a paper towel. And if you just squeeze it, you'll see some drops coming out. And that just lets you know that the water is flowing. And here you'll see that my tip is stained green. That's not unusual. Um, so what I like to do though is just wipe it on the paper towel to make sure that I don't have any color um, left on the tip of the brush because if you do that, it will transfer um, to um, part of the stamp that you may not want that color. So I'm gonna start off with garden green and the way the watercolor pencils work is you just kind of scribble in color. Um, you don't have to color in the whole image because again, with the water, um, with the aqua painter, it's going to move the color around. So I just like to, um, you know, I'm kind of pressing hard because this is a large image, but you know, um, I wanna be able to have quite a bit of color, okay? to work with. So what I like to do is um, do all of one shape first, or all of one color. So ideally what I would do is I would color in the rest of the leaves, um, top and bottom in the garden green before I start to, um, to uh, watercolor it. But because of time, and like I said, I'm just going to uh, just do just a little bit of it. And if you can see this and hopefully, um, you're getting a good idea with this on Facebook Live, is I'm just kind of making small circles and that's helping me pull the color down. And if I feel like like down here it's a little bit light, I can come back up here at the top where I, where I colored it in and I can pick up more of the garden green color and bring it down. And this is such an easy um, coloring technique it's kind of foolproof because it is water coloring. So if you go outside of the lines, don't worry about it. It actually kind of gives it some character. It gives it, um, 
you know, it's it's like watercoloring. But it, with, with this um, fine tip brush, this aqua painter, it's pretty easy to stay within the lines. So um, it just takes a little bit of practice, okay? So that is what uh, the leaves look like, and it is a little bit wet, so um, you know, you'll want to let it dry, but it does dry fairly quickly. And so now what I'm doing is squeezing the aqua painter and making sure that it is clear. All right, so let's do these little doodads. I don't really know what you call them, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Daffodil Delight. And because these are so small, you don't really have to put a whole lot of, um, you don't have to lay down a whole lot of color. And again, you'll just come in with your aqua painter and just smooth it out. Super simple. Just like so. Okay. And then I'm picking up cherry cobbler and I'm just gonna do the very same thing with the berries. Let me make sure I got that clear. And then just, again, just making circles and just pulling that color. And if you feel like um, like these berries are a little bit light, normally I, I probably should have laid down a little bit more color to make them a little bit brighter. But what you can do is once your, um, you know, if I'm wanting to add more color to these berries, I would let it dry and then I could come back in and, um, lay a little bit more color down and then spread that out and then that will make it a lot darker. But this should give you an idea of what it looks like. So let me show you my finished one. So here we go, that's my finished one. So, um, you know, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you know, I kind of got out of the lines here. Some of the green got here in the berries, but I don't think anybody's ever gonna notice that. I mean, down here. So I kind of got a little, um, you know, messy or uh, just, you know, for whatever reason, I could I didn't stay in the lines down there, but it doesn't really look bad at all. So um, don't be concerned. Don't think you have to start all over if you um, got outside of the lines. Okay, so let's bring the card base back in. So the next thing I did is um, I went ahead and did this already just to save time. And where's my other one? Oh, here it is. So I have cut the same die cuts in um, Garden Green and then Granny Apple Green. But with the Granny Apple Green, I'm just gonna use uh, this part of the die cut. So I'm just gonna snip this off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer these together and um, we'll see where it goes from there. I don't know, I just lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. Oh, that's what I was doing, okay, I was like, I did something else with this one. Okay, and then this one, I snipped off, uh, the, snipped it apart. Just to be able to make the layering a little bit more dimensional. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is go ahead and put this on the card, and then I'll be able to start tucking in um, this these uh, little die cuts so let me go ahead and put all these together so this is kind of the color combination and the reason why I'm using granny apple green is because I wanted to pull in that color because I'm going to be using the ribbon so that's um, you know why I chose those two co or that color and then I like to use our foam adhesive strips to um, really support this. So I am just going to put some down here. And these are great. They come in these strips and you just pull them up and then you can cut them. And then if you cut it too long or too short, you know, you can always go back and pick up more. For those of y'all that are that joined me a little bit later, if um, if you are interested in getting into my drawing um, that I will uh, do next week, all you have to do is just share this video on your Facebook feed and comment below that you shared, and you will go into the drawing, and I will pick a winner next week. Okay, so I'm just going to peel off the backing strip.
Is, there, is anybody else's kids starting as early as mine next week? I know a lot of schools wait until after Labor Day, but not here in Florida. They want to get them started as soon as possible. But they do get out before Memorial Day, so I guess that's the I guess that's the trade-off. Okay, and so I just adhered that in the center of the card, and so I don't know if you'll be able to see that dimension, but it's really nice. It's really nice and supported, so I love using our foam strips for that. Okay, so now let's put these together. And so what I kind of did is I'm just taking snail. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just kind of just just kind of um, layering them uh, the way that I would think that they may be like in nature. So something like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit of snail right here. And I'm going to put the granny apple green like so. So something like that. So you can play around with it. Y'all may come up with a, a better idea, which wouldn't surprise me. And uh, you can let us know. Oh, yours starts on the 20th. Yeah. I know my daughter's just, ugh, she's like, I'm not ready. She um, did freshman orientation today. She was one of the, she's going to be a junior. And the upperclassmen, um, they call this group Link Crew. And so they're a, a group of students who volunteer to um, do freshman orientation. So they walk the freshmen around, kind of show them where their classes are. And then um, they help them out, like for the first couple of weeks of school. So I think that's neat. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just put a little bit more snail right here. And I am just going to tuck this in on the lower right, lower left side, I should say. I may have put a little too much oops, foam on this. Okay. And then this one's, okay, that's good. And this one's gonna go in the top right. So each of your cards will be a little bit different um, you know, you can just play around and um, have as much of the greenery as you want peeking out. But I just love that color combination of the grainy apple green and the garden green. Just gives it, um, you know, some, just gives it a really pretty layering look. All right. So this card's coming along pretty quickly. Next what I'm going to do is just lay down some, um, Greeny apple green ribbon, and I just kind of eyeball it. I do want it to hang off the edge, and I just cut that at an angle. So let me see. So that measures about from point to point, that's about four and a half inches. And then I am just going to um, just put snail right here in the middle. And then just come in right here and just lay that down like so. And if you feel like um, your ribbon is too much to one side, like if you have too much on the right side or the left side, you can easily lift this up and reposition it. Okay. So what do y'all think so far? You like it? I love, it's kind of non-traditional, which is uh, what I like about it. But it does have some traditional things with the, with the holly leaves and the berries and the colors. Okay, so let's move on to our greeting, our sentiment. And um, what did I do with my, oh, here we go. So I am using a cherry cobbler, and I'm going to be heat embossing this. So you will want to get out your Versamark ink, and I'm using white embossing powder. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my embossing buddy and rub all across the cardstock to prevent um, any of the oils from my fingers, um, the powder sticking to that. Thank you, Karen. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my Stamparatus back in, and now I'm gonna flip the lid because I've got Merry Christmas 
positioned on this side. And I may have to move it, which is gonna be quite all right, the stamp I'm talking about. And I'm just putting my, this um, uh, magnet, I, I had a different stamp positioner before, and I still like to use these um, you know, sometimes it's kind of nice to have a smaller magnet, but our, these bar magnets are really nice. Okay, and so I'm going to put it here. And the reason why I like to use the Stamparatus for this is because um, it never fails. And I'm actually going to move this up. I'm going to make sure this is straight across. Um, it never fails that when I just stamp... Um, a clear mount stamp like this on a block, it's always crooked, and I can never cut it straight, and I just um, start saying bad words <laughs> and just throwing all the cardstock away. So um, this prevents all of that. And so what I'm going to do is just make sure that that stamp is straight, and if it's not, I can just correct that. Okay. And again, I'm just going to make sure, yep, okay, that's straight. It has enough room on the paper. And let's bring in a stamp set again. And then I'm just going to ink this up in the Versamark. Now, you may not be able to see this because this is a clear ink. And I'm just going to rub this with my embossing buddy one more time. White embossing powder shows up. It's really, really... Um, that one's probably <laughs> the worst one where it shows up where you don't want it to. So I'm going to make sure that it's, the white powder is only going to be where I want it to be. All right, so I have stamped that. And so I don't know if y'all be able to see that. And you can actually use Versamark ink um, to do like watercolor things. It's been ages since I've done that, but I remember that was one of the first techniques I learned when I first started, um, when I was first introduced to Stampin' Up! all the way back in 2003. Seems like ages ago. All right, and I am just going to sprinkle this on, and I just like to use this little powder tray. It just, it makes it really easy to catch everything, and um, so that's what it looks like there. Now, because I've got some powder where I don't want it. I just like to take um, a dry paintbrush and just gently just brush that away. And then from here, you would take your heat tool and um, melt this. My heat tool's not uh, close by. I don't. I need to get a longer extension cord. So I have already done this for us. So I'll just put that over to the side so I can do that off later. And I've already cut it down. So here you can see um, it has a little bit of a gloss to it. So hopefully you can see that. And it's so pretty. White embossing powder is just gorgeous. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is the ribbon is just gonna be peeking out a little. So I'm just gonna cut this. Again, just kind of eye freehanding this. And then that's just going to go right there in the center of the, um, the stamped image on top of the ribbon. Now, you can lay this flat if you want. Actually, you know what? I'll lay it flat because I put dimension up on the other one. Um, so I'm just going to use snail. For mailing purposes, I'm sure you want this flat. So, But, you know, it's kind of fun to put a lot of dimension on there if you're going to, like, hand deliver Christmas cards. Whoops, let's see. Put that a little bit more in the center. Okay. I can't quite get it in the center. Let's try this again. Whoops. There we go. I think that looks a little bit better. Okay. And there we have it. Just a fun um, watercolored card. And here, I'll bring in the first one. So you can kind of see, I'm not sure if you, I, hopefully I'm, I'm rotating it where y'all can see the dimensions. So this one is quite thick compared to this one. So what do y'all think? Did you like it? Let me know, give me some thumbs up or some hearts. That would be wonderful. 
Thank you, guys. Oh, thanks, Holly. Thanks, Diana. Oh, Karen, that was so sweet. Thank you so much. I'm glad y'all liked this. And each card's going to be different, so you can see here, you know, the way that I layered the greenery here is completely different than on my first card. So that's, you know, that's the great thing about handmade cards is that every one of them is always going to be unique, which is, um, I love that. I love that aspect of, of paper crafting. It's just, um, it's just so much fun. And, you know, this, this designer series paper, um, all right, so guys, there is today's card. Oh, I know what I was saying. So the designer series paper, you know, you could definitely use a brighter color if you don't like that tone on tone look. Um, you know, with this with this stamp set, you could definitely bring in a lot of colors, but I just kind of liked that that muted tone on tone and really let this part of the card pop out and um, really stand out. So again, that was using the Blended Seasons uh, stamp set, but the bundle is called Color Your Season, and it uh, does come with the matching framelits. So again, you are able to start ordering that today. It is while supplies last or till the, or I should say it goes through the end of August, so August 31st, or while supplies last. So um, you can find that information um, in my uh, online store, and I will have a blog post up later today as well as upload this up to YouTube. Um, so if you have any questions about any of the items that I used, you know, y'all know how to reach out to me. You can comment, um, email me, anything like that. Even call me if you want to. So, um, I don't think there was any questions. Oh, I do, yes, Diane, I do have a new hostess code. I did get that up. So um, with my hostess code, uh, you use that. And what I do is I will send you a gift at the end of the, or actually, it, <coughs> excuse me, the hostess code will be good all month of August. And then you will receive a gift from me um, in September. So I wait until all the orders have come in and then at the end of August I'll figure out um, how much hostess dollars that I have and then pick out a free gift for y'all and then I order it. So it, there's about a two week turnaround time from the time that I order it and then I send it out to you. So you usually get it around um, mid-month of the following month. If that makes sense. So if y'all have any questions about my hostess code, um, also if you are wanting to get a jump start on your holiday product or your holiday cards and really wish that you could get things out of the holiday catalog right now, you can. If you join my team, you can actually pick holiday products for your starter kit. So if you have any questions about that, I can definitely talk to you about that too. And um, I think that's it. Okay, guys. Well, have a wonderful day. Thanks again for joining me um, later today. And um, I will see y'all later this week. Bye, guys.